Hey everyone, you're watching The Hot Zone and I'm your guest host, Dante Ramos. Today in The Hot Zone, we have Bayardo de Marguilla from Netflix's new series, Tiny Pretty Things, where they focus on a Chicago elite ballet school. But it's not just about ballet. There's a bunch of drama, love, passion, and so much more. Hi, Bayardo, how are you? Hey, Dante, what's going on? Good, good. We are in quarantine, but we're still making things happen. Congratulations on this new series, Tiny thank Pretty you. Things. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. We're just so excited to show it to the world, you know, so it's been like a lot of anticipation. And then finally, it's dropping on Netflix. It's going to be awesome. Awesome. So I'm going to jump right into it. So yeah. Ramon and you both have very much of somewhat the same life in the sense of you guys were teachers of the arts. Yeah. So did you pull any of your experiences from real life to play this character? Uh, I did. And it was, it also was a lot of like my upbringing as an immigrant and coming from Mexico with my family. Ramon is Cuban American and had his family come from Cuba. Um, so one of the things that I looked at was about the Latin American style of dance and the Cuban style of ballet. And I looked, you know, did a lot of research on different dancers that come out of Cuba. Um, and I definitely related to everyone. Like Ramon's style of teaching is like, throw you to the fire and see what happens. You know, kind of like a shut up and dance type thing and then we'll talk later. Um, and that's something that I definitely, definitely related to and his passion and his fire, you know, it's like that, that Latin spice, which is <laughs> awesome. Yeah, no, I literally got all of that from just the trailer. I was like, oh, this character is a whole lot. Um, and speaking of passion, so one of my questions, you kind of already hit on it is, so Ramon isn't the typical teacher that you'd see. He is very passionate. He is very there in your face. Um, do you feel that sometimes experience and passion can trump talent? Yeah, I do. Um, but also you can be super talented and if you can't control your emotions, you won't go as far as you can. Um, so it's a, it's basically a balance of keeping everything in check, you know, definitely relying on the talent that you have, but also being able to control everything else because, you know, it's in the real world, you get tested in all types of things. So you got to be super in control. Um, my background was more of like a fighter's mentality because I come from boxing and contact sports. So that fight mentality was something that I definitely, that resonated with me in this like cutthroat dance ballet school you know, in the ballet world. Um, it's just as cutthroat and you have to definitely have that mentality as well, you know. And wow. <laughs> and speaking of ballet and dancing, what was that training process for you with choreography and dancing to be on the show? So we had a resident choreographer uh, named Jennifer, Jennifer Nichols that came out of the National Ballet of Canada. And what we essentially did was create our own kind of ballet troupe and dance troupe. So, a month prior to shooting, we all got together. My castmates are all exceptional dancers with great experience. They're just amazing to watch. And so what we did was we rehearsed every day for one month. Me being a choreographer, I would observe and try when I could. You know, my bar technique is pretty decent, you know, but my <laughs> is all right. Um, and so for a month and a half, we would train with each other and dance. And then throughout the whole shooting process, when you weren't shooting your scenes, you were still in dance rehearsal. You were still, you know, going over movements, making sure your body could handle it. Because in the same way you see, you know, film and television, maybe like a sports movie or something, the focus that you have on, you know, making that sport authentic or maybe that fight is what we kind of did with the world of dance. So it was awesome. It was a lot of work, but at the same time, like we're so proud of it. And like when you see these dance scenes, you're just in awe. There was times where I forget my lines because I'd just be watching everybody and then be like, oh yeah, oh yeah, I got to say something. Um, I love that. <laughs> really in the moment right there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so what attracted you to your character, Ramon? When you were reading the script, what made you be like, yeah, I think I can do this. I think I can really play this character. Yeah, um, the, the beauty of Ramon is his honesty. And that comes along with his fire. Like me, with my background coming from an immigrant family, it was always like, what is the norm? How can I exists in this world and then stand out. And I think that's something that Ramon had to do as well. He had, he wasn't, he's not, he's kind of like an anti-classic, you know, person. So all this elitism in the world of ballet, he's the first person to come and, you know, change it, you know, upside down and push the boundaries and push what he can do. 
Um, and that definitely was something that stood out to me in addition to just like his blunt honesty. So like he pushes these kids, he gets the best and the worst out of them. And he's just completely honest. So you will definitely have like a love and hate relationship with him. You'll like him, you'll hate him, you do, you'll do everything. Um, but uh, he's just, you know, the, the, the underlying theme of all that is just blunt honesty, you know, to get you to where you're supposed to be or where he thinks you can get to. Yeah, I like that. That's a very strong character then. Um, yeah. What do you hope that the fans who read the book will be able to take from the actual Netflix series? Um, the beauty of our series is that we took many of the themes that you see in the book, many of the themes that you see in kind of dance movies like Center Stage and uh, Black Swan, for example, and we, we definitely up the stakes. Um, the thing that we did with our series is that this is not just a series that was made for the dance community, right? We take themes that exist in the real world that will, that are so compelling, that are very timely, that will attract, you know, not only the people that love the book, but also just outside of the dance world, which makes it great. Like you take these characters that exist in the dance world, but, um, but they're, they're all real people, you know, who you love in the beginning, you might hit at the end, who you hate in the beginning, you might love at the end. Everyone has secrets, you know? And everyone was just trying to, to get better and make it to the top. Um, and so the, the book was just like a great start and we just adapted it and upped the stakes and, and did what we could, but, but they're both wonderful, yeah. I love that too. And was there a Ramon in your own personal life, someone who pushed you, um, who you may have loved and hated at the same time too, but really wanted to see the best in you? Yeah, coming from a sports background, a lot of football coaches that I had growing up. <laughs> boxing instructors. My high school football coach was a nicer version of Ramon. I think the honesty is what you can see in a lot of people. Um, a fictional character would definitely be like uh, the teacher in Whiplash, the movie Whiplash. Like, Oh my God, that's uh, a good one. Yeah, so a, a fictional character would be someone like that. But in my life, uh, my high school football coach was definitely a nicer version of Ramon. Okay. And um, did COVID or the quarantine change anything for on set for you or even how the whole entire process of, of filming Tiny Pretty Things went? We were lucky enough to complete the filming before COVID kind of was more spread. Um, so I was already back in Los Angeles because we filmed everything in Toronto um, by the time the lockdown started happening in the quarantine. Um, as far as our show, we did a lot of sound um, and post-production sound basically uh, at home. So we would get a lot of stuff shipped to us and you would create your own little voiceover studio in your own apartment and then try to figure out how to like, you know, uh, do a little bit of the additional dialogue recording. So that was cool, but we were thankful that we were able to get all of the, the filming done. Um, but Netflix has been very cool throughout the whole process. So like they always send the guidelines and if we are lucky enough to get a season two, like, we feel very safe and I will, I'll test every day. I'm ready for it, you know? I was gonna say, I yeah. know some people on set where they're like, yeah, we have to do it like three times a day. I'm like, what? I couldn't even yeah. imagine having to live that life on set. So that yeah. is a, a blessing in itself that you guys got to um, record and film prior to everything hitting. Yeah, and whenever I take a ch I get a chance to test at home, especially like now with the holidays, I hope to see my family. I'll be testing every few days, and I'm I feel like I'm getting used to it now. You know, like the whole process. So so we'll be ready, but thankfully we're we feel safe. <laughs> right, and where did you build the confidence? Although you did um, do football and you choreography to keep up with the actual level of dancing that all your fellow peers were at. So I mean. If you see my castmates, these young kids look amazing. So like I knew that me being in my 30s, I had to put in double the work. So in addition to the ballet work that we would do and like any books that I might read, I was in the gym six days a week. Um, I did a lot of F45, I boxed. So uh, the first thing I did was find a good boxing gym in Toronto um, and then F45 as well. So I was working out six days a week. If we filmed at eight in the morning, I was in the gym at six. If we filmed at six in the morning, I was in the gym at 10 p.m., you know, whenever I could. But it was just because I needed to keep up with the young, my young castmates because they look exceptional. Um, and, uh, and yeah, anytime that we had a chance to all kind of get together when we weren't filming, we were having a dance party. So I was always trying to get in the mix, do some salsa, do what I could, you know. 
I could see that. I could see a whole dance battle going. You're like, uh-uh, this is not done. We're, we got to keep going. Yeah, you play any 90s throwback R&B and rap, and I'm in. I'm in. So. <laughs> okay, I know who to tag team then. I know who yeah. to put in. Who's next? And my last question for you is, if you had to put your dancing shoes on right now, what song are you selecting? Oh, right now, it would be, I'll go old. Well, not old, but uh, Hector Laveau is a, a salsa singer. Um, there's a song that he sings called La Murga that my fiance loves. And so I love playing that. And whenever you hear the trumpets coming at the beginning, that's going to be my jam right now. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Great choice. Great choice. Thank you so much. And congratulations on this new Netflix series, Tiny Pretty Things. And congratulations once again. Yeah, thank you so much. Hey everyone, this is Vallardo de Murguía and you're watching The Hot Zone.